your head, just shout a big amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm not sure if they are, they are still fixing something that side. Power it to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to just give your neighbor a high five and say you are welcome. Not a low five, a high five. High five. Say you are welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, if they don't give you attention, just turn to the other one and say, You are welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us give, uh, let us just appreciate our worship team. Uh, and uh, let's also welcome and appreciate our bishops, our father and our mother. And uh, let us all together appreciate all the leaders, the pastors, and every committee member. And lastly, I want you to just appreciate yourselves. Amen. Maybe, maybe, lastly, let us just all stand on our feet and appreciate our God in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. excited here just wait hallelujah God is good and all the times God is good and all the times hallelujah we, we are going to go to the word of the Lord and uh, I believe God is going to help us we want to also welcome every visitor uh, who is here today may you feel uh, welcome, amen, in the presence of the Lord. And we want to say wherever we are, you are, we love you, and may God richly bless you. And that as you as you go out, don't go out the same way you came in, amen. Be a transformed somebody, hallelujah. I believe we all have an expectation from the Lord, and... Uh, I believe that he's going to speak to us once again. Hallelujah. Uh, last week we were teaching uh, deeply about, uh, if, if, if you were you here, you'll remember we were speaking about what? Love. Love. Hallelujah. And uh, I don't know whether it's fortunately or unfortunately we are going to finish off the topic today. Hallelujah. Uh, we are just going to, we're not going to go through what we went through last week. Uh, we could mention one or two things, but uh, we, we will continue and then just wrap, wrap it off. Hallelujah. And I believe that the Lord is going to help us this wonderful day. Amen. I want us to close our eyes and I'm going to pray for the reading of the word. Father, we thank you for you sent your only son to die for the sin of the world and whosoever believes in him should not die but have everlasting life you sent your word to heal our sicknesses you sent your word and your spirit to set us free and to liberate us in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and even this wonderful Hey, Lord, we want to say thank you so much as we are gathered, Lord, as your children. May you please, O oh Lord, speak to us once again. May you touch each one of us according to our needs in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to go to our famous scripture uh, that expound a lot when it comes to love, that is First Corinthians. Amen. Uh, today, I, I see the bishop was was reading. Amen. Uh, I don't see uh, the SG. I think uh, 
here and there we will ask we don't want to trouble the bishop a lot but it looks like your your version is different amen i don't know whether it's this bishopric anointing or what but uh, we will we will there and there ask you to read for us and god will will, will help us hallelujah uh, let us go to corinthians chapter 13 and then we will read from verse 1 we go down and then uh, I believe the Lord will help us. It's, it's 12 o'clock and uh, we are hoping that by uh, 1 o'clock we will be out. I think we have eaten our food for our lunch there, our, our light lunch. But I believe we will be out of here. Amen. Uh, if, if you are there, uh, preferably in English, I will ask other languages if need be so that we can just move fast uh, and um, you know and go together if, if we can have a mind for someone who's volunteering to read for us today in english if, if you are there and you know your 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 your, your english is good amen if you can help us i think pastor d will volunteer to help us uh, in the name of jesus amen uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we will read this one. I mean, uh, last week we spoke about um, love and how that love is one thing that will give you confidence in the day of that judgment. And you remember when we read in the book of 1 John chapter, I think it was chapter 4, when you go to uh, verse 15, 16, 17, and uh, somewhere there it speaks about that on the day of judgment the only thing that will give you courage and uh, you know to stand before the Lord on the day of judgment we said it's what? It's love and uh, in other words if if you are going to to the day of judgment without love you won't you won't have courage to stand before the, the you know the Lord hallelujah so I want us to read now in verse, I, I'm not going to repeat what we said for the sake of time. We'll just continue with where we left off and then we'll move from verse 1, First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men. Though I speak, we will go together with the tongues of men. And of angels. And of angels. And have not love. So it means there are tongues of men, right? Mm. And there are tongues of Angel. angels. What is the tongue of man? Now I'm speaking a tongue of man. But the tongue of angel, it's an unknown language, right? Like when I speak in tongues, when we are speaking in tongues, we are speaking the tongues of the spirit or the language of the spirit or the language of angels. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that even though I can speak with tongues of men, and the tongues of angels but if i do not have love how am i i have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal so if i speak with tongues of men or of angels but i do not possess love i am like someone who is making what a noise hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. are we together so um, let us go to, 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 to the next scripture. I won't explain a lot for the sake of time. Uh, most of them are self-explanatory. And though I have the gift of prophecy. Now, even though I can have the gift of prophecy. And understand all mysteries. And understand all mysteries. And all knowledge. And all knowledge. And though I have all faith. And even though I can have all faith. So that I could remove mountains. A faith that can even remove what? Mountains. Mountains. And have not love. And have not love. I am nothing. I am equals to what? Nothing. Yeah. That nothing replace nothing by zero. Amen. Amen. I want us to read in, in Zulu. Please read for us in Zulu if you are there. Uh, if Just verse. Verse. We're in verse 3. Two. Is it two? Yeah. Please read verse two for us. No man in a prophet. We call that is it had no zonke. No pass gonke. No man. No man in a who call a gonke. Gango kuba. Gin gangula. Nina good 
Hallelujah. Now, what the Bible, what Paul is teaching here is teaching us that <coughs> there is something that is more glorified than something. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is glorifying something over something. Now, he says that if I can have the gift of prophecy, someone says prophecy. <laughs> number one, number two, and if I knew all mysteries or secrets, right, of the future, and knew everything about everything. Are we together? Amen. But did, didn't love others. What good would I be? And if I had the gift of faith to of faith so that I can speak to the mountains. Imagine, Bazaran, what is greater than speaking to the mountain? I mean, if here anyone can speak to a mountain, that person is great. But the Bible says, if you are that person that could even move mountains, know the future and know everything about everything, but if you have got no love, you are, you are equal to what? Nothing. You are nothing. Yeah, thank you so much. You are what? Zero. So zero amounts to nothing. I went together. So the Bible is... Look, look at the gift of prophecy. You know how glorified the gift of prophecy is? It is glorified in the church. It is glorified all over. When you are a prophet, people revere or they respect you. But the Bible says, if you have this gift, but you do not have love, you are what? Nothing. Not only the gift. If you have got the gift of faith, that you can even move mountains. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, if, if I were to move mountains, was alone, I, I, it would be enough. Literally, I'll just, I'll just go to Kilimanjaro. I'll make a lot of money. Have the cameras. Please uh, record me. I want to move a mountain. But before I move a mountain, I want you to put some few hands here so I can show you how to move a mountain. The Bible says, even if you can be that type of a person, move mountains. But remember, when the Bible speaks about mountains, it can also be literal. The Bible says, you shall say to the mountain, move yourself and throw yourself to the sea. It means it also speaks about situations. Even if you have got the capacity to move situations and to handle or to resolve issues, but if you do not have love, you are equal to nothing. Right, let us move off over to verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods even, to feed the even poor. Even though I can give everything to the poor. And though I give my body to be burned. And even if I can give my body as a sacrifice. And have not love. And does not have love. It profits me it nothing. It profits me nothing. Look at this. In the book of John chapter 3 verse 6. In the Bible says, For God so loved. Are we together? The sacrifice that he did for us, it was not for the reason of sacrificing, but it was the reason of what? Of love. That's what the Bible says. Even though I can give my body to be banned, even though I can give my body as a sacrifice, if, I, if there is no love in it, it does not profit anything. Right? Are we, let's move over to the next verse. Love is now patient. Listen to this. Love is what? Patience. Patience. And is kind. Love is what? Is kind. kind. Yes? Love does not envy. Love does not envy. envy. Love does not promote itself. Love does not promote itself. It is not puffed up. It is not puffed up or does, it's not boastful. Does not behave rudely. Does not behave rudely. It is not self-seeking. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily provoked. And it is not easily provoked. We're not court I think Spedi will do justice. Matai boss. Maramut. Ikupaka ka Verse verse four. Lirato Ali Felipe. Lirato Ali Felipe. Number one. Lirato Ali Felipe. 
Number two. Love is kind. Lirato alitibi. That word mona king. He jealous again. It's not pra- uh, boastful. And it's not proud. Give an effigy. I'm going to read that nutrition. It does not do what? What is that? What does that mean? It does not behave rudely. Hey, I don't know what that is. Self seeking. In other words, love does not put you first. Right? When you are filled with love, it is not about you. You don't put yourself first. But you are putting the needs of others, and then you come. Right? Amen. Let's continue. Yeah. Hey. It cannot impute evil. It cannot impute evil. Hannah, you know there are people who sit down and plan evil against you. Do you know that people can just sit down and plan? Hey, no, this one. Let's just show them. Let's just plan something and just to destroy their lives. That is not from love, right? If there are such people and if you feel in your heart that sometimes you've got this idea of planning something against someone, just know that you need to pray. Hallelujah. You need to pray so that you can operate in the dimension of love. Let's, let's continue. Let's, let's move over to... I'm, I'm getting somewhere, but we are just passing here. It does not rejoice in wickedness. It does not rejoice in wickedness. But rejoices in the truth. But rejoices in the truth. In the truth, yes. It bears all things. Love bears all things. Believes all things. And love believes all things. Hopes all things. And it also hopes all things. Endures all things. And it endures all things. Lerato Bazaran, when you love, there is no doubt in it all things that are happening around you. And also, not just things around you. You do not doubt other people. Right? You do not put other people to shame. Because love, we read in the book of 1 John last week, I think it's chapter 3, that God is love. So, God will not, as love, put himself in a position where he is doubting other people. God will not be in the position where he is uh, looking down on other people. But when you are filled with love, you are also filled with God. We explained last week how that if you have love in that way, you know God. Hallelujah. Because there is no way you can, you can have love and you can say, I love without knowing God. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Hallelujah. What verse is that? Um, seven. Let's, let's, let's move over. Love never fails. Now, love, listen to this. Love does not fail. Yeah. Are we together? Amen. Love does not what? Fail. fail. But if there are prophecies. Now, now, the comparison that I spoke about earlier. Love does not fail. fail. Right? Mm-hmm. But if there are prophecies. They will fail. They will do what? Fail. And I will explain this. Love does not fail. But if there are prophecies, they will what? Fail. fail. Yes? If there are tongues. If there are tongues. They will see. They will cease or they will get to a point where they stop. If there is knowledge. Now, now, listen to this carefully. You know, we said there are tongues of men and tongues of angels. angels. So if there is a tongue of men, one day, the tongue will stop operating. But love will take over. Right? When the tongue stops, love must do what? Take over. When the prophecy stops, love must do what? Must take over. Finish it off. If there is knowledge, if there is knowledge, it will vanish away. In other words, it does not matter what I what I know when I compare it with what? With love. love. Are, we, are we learning something? Amen. It is a teaching session, so I want us to all go together so that we can understand. Repeat that part and then we will move forward. 
if there is knowledge if there is knowledge it will vanish away it will vanish away verse 9 verse 9 for we know in part listen to this for we know in part and we prophesy and in we part. prophesy and in part but when that which is perfect but, has come but when love has come then that which is in part will be ended now knowledge and prophecy will end yeah i i, I don't know if this makes sense so that everyone can understand. Verse 9. Verse 9. The, the things we know, they are for a moment. Even when we prophesy, it's just for a certain season. Mara, when that which is full comes, all these things will all come to an end. Now, there is something that will remain after all. What is that thing? Love. We said on the day of judgment last week, all the works you have done, there will be nothing compared to what? To love. So, prophecy will fail. And, and I'm not here to despise prophecy. Uh, I prophesy sometimes when led by the spirit. I'm not here to despise knowledge. I seek after knowledge. But all I'm saying is that when there is knowledge and you are glorifying knowledge about love, then your, 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 your priorities are not placed correctly. Hallelujah. Because one day, prophecy will stop. Right? One day, knowledge will stop. But there is something the Bible says, it calls it a perfect thing. Yeah. When that perfect thing comes, all these imperfect things, there will no longer be a need for them. Yeah. In other words, when, when the Lord comes, I want us to hear clearly, when the Lord comes and we are reigning with him, there will not be a need for prophecy. Are you aware that prophecy is not for heaven, it's for earth? When the Lord comes and we are reigning with him, knowledge will no longer be important. A praise song will no longer be as important as love because what will be reigning in heaven is what? Is love. The language of heaven is love. And that's why the Bible says, if you do not have love, you do not know God. Are we together? El Sinali Rato are we together? Osnalirato, you do not know God. So I'm sure already there, Lily King, you are already searching. Am I a lover or, or what? But if you are not, the Bible says you do not know God. Right. Are, 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 we, are, are we finishing it off so that we can move to the next verse? When I was a child, now, I spoke like a child. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. I understood. You know, when you are a child and you are still growing, what is more important to you is power, is knowledge, is prophecy. But th this man says, when I was a child, I spoke, I spoke like, like a, child. a child. Yes? In I, other I, words, when, when it comes to love, love as much as is the language of heaven, but it is also a higher dimension of Christianity. Yes. Hallelujah. In as much as love is a language, but it is also used as a dimension for Christianity. Because remember, when Jesus died, he died because of love. And we said last week in Romans chapter 3 that he loved you even when you were a sinner. When you did not even think of him, he loved you and he died for you. So the highest form of communication in any level of frequency is love. Are we together? Amen. You know, that's why kids, you know, children, you know, children, are, 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 they can easily sense if they are loved or not. Do you know that? Kids, they, they can sense. And the warmth and your heart when it comes to love, they can easily run to you. 
And I'm not saying if they don't run to you, you don't have love. Some people will start being worried now. Amen. Finish it off. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Yes. I understood like a child. So in other words, when 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 you were still growing, you know, uh, when you when you are operating in the spirit and in power, all we were excited about when we grew up was to pray for someone and they fall. Amen. Yeah. It was when I have a powerful word and it's precise. That for me was enough when I was still growing. But now that I'm old, yeah. those things, they no longer fascinate me. Mm. I, I, I will learn something. Yes. I will learn something. Mm. You know, when we grew up, we were doing a revivals all over. I would be worried when I pray for someone and they don't fall. I would be worried when, you know, I speak a word and it's not precise. But now, I'm no longer worried. And I will prove to you very soon to the next scripture that I'm going to finish off and then we'll move over. I thought like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man. But when I became a man, what I... is that I became a man equivalent to? When I now possess love. When I became a man. Now, I usually say growth is not the function of time. Hallelujah. Amen. Growth is not the function of time. time, but growth is determined by what you feed yourself with. Yeah. That's why you can have a, a person who is 40 years old, but they are younger than someone who is 20 years old. Yeah. It is not time that causes growth and maturity, but it is what you feed yourself with. So when I became a man, in other words, when I now operated in love, not in the gift, I put away childish things. I put away. What, what are childish things? You know, all these things that are done without love. love. Mm. But now we see through a glass. Now listen to this. Now we see, now we see through a glass dimly. Darkly. Or darkly. But then face to face. But then we shall see how? Face, face to face. For now I know in part. Now, listen to this. Now I know in part. What I know is just a portion. But then. But then. I will know even as also I am known. I will know exactly how I am known. Hallelujah. Amen. What does this mean? It means it's a comparison of love and everything else. Now I know in part. Now I prophesy in part. Now I see through a glass, right? But then, what is, when is then? It's when you step in love. Hallelujah. Love is a perfect thing. When you step into love, when you see, you are not seeing over a glass. You are seeing it live. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I prophesy, it is no longer just in part. It's in full because there is love. Let me tell you a secret. I can prophesy now to the bishop and give him a wrong word. But if it's full of love, that is perfect. <laughs> but I can prophesy to Ntadesianeho with pride. Just because I can prophesy, even if the word is precise, if there is no love, it's useless. So I can come and give in the house of God just because I have got money. If it has got no love, it is useless. Now we understand the scenario. Because whatever is done outside love, it is done through a mirror. But when you are operating in the fullness of love, there is no boundary, there is no mirror, you are within. Are we together? Yeah. When you are operating love, you are where? You are within, you are inside. So, the prophecy that you give, it's perfect. When I lay my hands on the sick, it's perfect. That's what the Bible says, when Jesus prayed for the sick, he was filled with compassion. And then he prayed for them. So he loved them. And then he did what? He prayed for them. That's why when you are a leader, you should lead through the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Is it finished? Where are we? 13. 13. 
And now abide. Now listen to this. And now abide faith. These three things they abide: faith, hope, hope, love, and love. These three. Now these three. But the greatest of but these. But the greatest of all these things is love. Is love. <laughs> The things that remain at the end. Kitumelo, which is faith, which is a hope and love. These things, these three things, they remain. Mara, the biggest of all of this is love. Someone say love. love. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the last verse, am I right? Now move over to chapter 14, verse 1. Verse 1. I think we recorded this last week, but I want us to just go through it again. Follow after love. Follow after love. I don't know what the bishops say, but maybe if you can prepare it for us, bishop. Follow after love. And desire spiritual gifts. Then desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. Especially the gift of prophecy. It is good that you are enthusiastic and passionate about spiritual gifts. It is, it is good. Especially prophecy. It, especially it is good that you are you are so much zealous about spiritual gifts. I think it's, it's not it's not finished, ne? You can finish it for us, Bishop. Number one, just verse one. Number is, is number one finished? Okay. Let me read in my in my in my in my uh, version. It's amplified. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire love first. You know, when you pursue something, it's not just something that you you know you look for and it's found. But when you pursue something, you pursue it with all your strength, with all your understanding. In other words, you must seek after it, pursue until you find it. The Bible says you must pursue eagerly after love. Are we together? And to uh, make it your aim. Are we together? Pursue and seek, acquire love, and make it your what? Your aim. Your great quest or your great search. And earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowment or gift. Especially that, especially that you may prophesy or interpret the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. Now, what does this mean in simple terms that in order for you to have a perfect gift, you must first pursue what? Love. So what, what does this really, really mean? It means that to have a gift of prophecy is deemed, it's, 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 it's a, it, it's deemed as less of a value when you have not sought and found love. I don't know if this makes sense to the saints. What the Bible is teaching us is that every gift in the house of God must not be pursued more than you can pursue love. Because the Bible says, pursue love eagerly and make it your goal or your aim. Then after you have found love, search for spiritual gifts. Now, I'm giving you a shortcut to finding your perfect gift, your perfect spiritual gift, whether it's Gift of faith, whether it's prophecy, whether it's healing. <coughs> now seek after what? Love. love. Once you found love, all things they come flowing. The gifts they come flowing easily. Do you know? Let me tell you something. Do you know that I cannot speak a word that is effective in your love, in your life, until I am possessed with love over you. Do you know I can come and speak the right thing and say, I see that God is taking da-da-da and all of those things. 
But if there is no love that comes from what I am saying, there is no effectiveness to what I'm saying. If I am praying for you and there is no love in my, you know, in this action that I'm doing, it is not effective. But that which is perfect when it comes, what is perfect? Love. When love comes, everything is made perfect. Hallelujah. So I want us to, as we journey in this Christian life, think about love before you think about a gift. Think about charity before you think about your spiritual endowment or gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want us to rush to, in fact, I, 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 I will cut it short because of time. I want us to, last, last we, we, we said that we are loved by God and not because we've done anything, but just because he is God. Amen. And because God is love, he does not need a reason to love you. Amen. If God needed reasons to love us, most of us would not be loved. If, if it required us to be good in order to be loved, we would not fit in the scale of God loving. Are we together? Because most of us, it means every day we will fall short of that love because of our actions. But we are loved just because we are people then, because he is God. Yeah. Are we together? Amen. You are loved, not what you can do or not do. You are loved by God just because he is what? He is God. And I know most of us are struggling with the issue of love because we think we should do something in order to be loved. But God, when it comes to him, it has got nothing to do with what you do, but it has got everything to do about who he is. He loves us because he's God. Period. Are we together? Amen. Let us go to Romans chapter, in fact, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. So when God came to die for us, he made sure that love was first. He made sure that what was ahead, it was love and not a sacrifice. Because he desires Love more than sacrifice. Hallelujah. Read for us someone. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Yes. He who did not spare his own son. Now he, God, who did not spare his only son. But delivered him up for us. But all. he delivered his only son for all of us. How shall he not with him also? Freely give us all now, things. Now, if God was able to give his only son, how shall he not freely give us all things? Do you understand that scenario? Amen. So he is putting Jesus in all things. He says, his only son, who was important to him, if he could give him to us, what is, for example, a job compared to his son? Are we together? If God could give his son, his only son, the one who upholds the universe by the word of his power. The one who has created all things. The one that everything exists through him. If God was able to say, no, I'm giving this one. What is marriage compared to him? Amen. Hallelujah. What is promotion compared to Jesus? What is money compared to Jesus? What is healing compared to the Bible says, Will he not give you all other things if he was able to give his only son? Aspedi or Rivale and then we will move over to Psalms. Yes. Yes. Now, God is in the business of giving us what is due to us. Are we together? Amen. God is in the business of giving us what is due to us. So if he was able to give his son, will he not be able to give us all things through him? And I want you to, as you go home, be certain that God will give you what is due to you according to Jesus because what you need, you cannot compare it to Jesus. And if he was able to give it to, he was able to give his son, surely 
you know, he can give you a, you know, a good rest. There is a song in Pedi, it says, Ali Pirimile, Unayabro. I know some of you are struggling when it comes to sleeping because you are thinking, God can give you a proper sleep. God can give you an answer that you have been looking for. Because God loves you and me, right? Let us rush quickly to Psalm 17 verse 8. Now we are, we are almost wrapping up. Keep me as the eye of your apple. Keep me as the Sorry, eye as of the your, apple, as the of, apple your of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Now, keep me as the apple of your eye. This is the psalmist who says to God, keep me as the apple of your eye. Now, it is, it is known that the way God loves us, he compares us to the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. Now, if you were to ask, if you were, if we were to ask what an apple, not apple, amen. Apple. You know what an apple of the eye is? You know this black thing here? Do you see this black thing on the eye? That is an apple of the eye. So when, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the eyes of God, you are that thing. You are an apple. And imagine, there is no one who will be able to touch you because no one can poke the eye of God. This is how much he loves you. He compares you to his own apple. That no one will be able to, to play around with the apple of God's eye. Because when you are touching the apple, you are hurting God. So God is simply saying, no one will hurt you as long as I am in the picture. Hallelujah. No one will snatch you out as long as I am your God. Are we together? Let's run quickly to Psalms chapter 30. Psalms chapter 30, 121, if I'm not mistaken. Verse, verse 3 to 4. Psalm chapter 121, verses 3 to 4. He will not allow your foot to be moved. Now, the Lord, because of the reason of his love, number one, you will not allow your foot to be moved. Are we together? What does that mean? It means that in your walkings and in your dealings, God will not allow you to trip and fall. But there is something that we need to understand. That thing is called the love of God. Not only should we accept it. Last week we said you should accept it. You should also practice it and share the same love that God has shared to you, right? You will not allow your foot to be what? to be moved. Continue. He who keeps you will not slumber. Now, he who keeps you, who is your keeper? The Lord is your keeper. He will not do what? He will, look, if we have knowledge of what God can do and cannot do, at least we know that God does not sleep. And he does not sleep because he does not want to. He does not sleep because of you. How much does God love to an extent where he decides, I'm not going to sleep because of my own people. Yeah. So he does not sleep. He does not slumber because of you as a reason. Repeat that scripture and, and move forward. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel. Behold, he who keeps Israel. Will neither slumber nor sleep. He will neither slumber nor sleep. Read for us. Uh, Exodus chapter 23 verse, uh, verse 20 Exodus 23 verse 20 It reads See I am sending an angel before you Now when, when I was praying for this message The message of love This is the key scripture that I was given To come and give to you Hallelujah Amen. And with this, it's your prophecy for the day. Hallelujah. It's your prophecy for the week. It's your prophecy for the month, for the year. It will sustain you throughout the year. And I want us to stand on our feet because uh, I am that short. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. I want us to read again Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. 
See, I am sending an angel now, before see, you. See, I am sending an angel before you. To keep you in the way. To keep you in the way. And to bring you to the place which I have prepared. And to bring you to a place which I have prepared. Speedy. Let's go back to English. See, see, I am sending an angel before you. I am you. sending an angel before you to keep you in the way. This angel is coming to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. And this angel will also bring you into a place which I have prepared, prepared for you. Hallelujah. I said, This is your word for the day. This is your word for the week. This is your word for the month. And this is your word for the year. See, I am sending an angel. Amen. In other words, you have not seen it, but God says, I am doing what? Sending, sending an, angel. an angel, right? Yes. To do what? To keep you in To your keep way. you in your way. In other words, you have been, you, you know, you have been going out of your way. You are going, but there are things that are shifting you off your way. But God says, I am bringing you an angel, that angel which will do what? Keep, Keep you in your way. But what does this mean also? Uh, can we uh, play? Where's, where's the little man? I want us to, you know, because uh, uh, who is this? Joshua, when he prophesied, he said, bring me a minstrel. Amen. So, uh, so I want to jump into that prophetic, uh, you know, uh, into the prophetic atmosphere because there are things that I'm going to say that are going to transform and change your life. Amen. So I want us to play strings. Uh, I know, Ruti, you, you don't have, you don't know how to navigate that one. Play strings there or ten strings because when I prophesy, I prefer strings. Amen. Oh, brother, how is it? Let's clap hands for him. Hallelujah. This is the word that God gave me during the week. See, I am sending an angel. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us clap hands for Pastor Rotao. See, I am sending an angel. And when God speaks, he does not lie. Hallelujah. Amen. When God speaks, he does not he does not lie. I want strings. So God has sent me to come and tell you that he is sending an angel. Now, what do angels do? Angels, they come as spiritual authorities. Hallelujah. Amen. And they come to bring a supernatural encounter over lives. So each time there is an angel that comes. He either comes to bring a message or to bring a shift. Are we together? Yes. So God says, CDMM, see. But remember, the just shall walk by faith. So when he says see, you may not see an angel coming, but you shall surely see the results. Hallelujah. You may not necessarily see the angel appearing in your house, but there will be signs. So he said, CDMM, I have come, or I am bringing an angel over to your life, and this angel will keep you on your way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, the, what an angel does, in most cases, when the children of Israel in the book of Exodus, they were leaving Egypt, the Bible says, there was an angel ahead of them. There was also an angel that was walking behind them. So when the angels comes, they guard your surroundings. Hallelujah. 
when the angels come, before you step into the future, they've already walked the journey. Yeah. And, and from the back, there is nothing that shall harm you from the back because there is also a pillar of cloud that is guarding you by day and by night. Hallelujah. So God says, see, I am sending an angel, an angel that will keep you well on your way. And I hear the Lord says, some of you, you've been walking ways, but th those are not your ways. Hallelujah. You have been walking journeys, but those are not your journeys. Some of you, you have been in things that you are not supposed to be, but the Lord says, I am bringing an angel that will keep you. In other words, if you were on the other way, there is an angel that is coming to keep you on your right way. Hallelujah. That's why you will begin to experience a move and a shift of things in your life that are supposed and that were meant to happen over the years. Hallelujah. You see, when God sends an angel to bring you on the way, it means that there are things that may have happened and occurred over your life that may have shifted you from your way. What is your way? It's your purpose. What is your way? It is your direction and what you are called to do. Some of you, you are supposed to be far in life, but you are shifted by circumstances. But God says, I am sending an angel that will bring you on your way. Now listen to this carefully. When God places a blessing on, I'm giving an example, when God says there is a blessing in Limpopo, right? The blessing will not leave Limpopo to Gaute. Are we together? The only thing that must happen is that you must drive to Limpopo. Now, this is what the angel is coming to do. The angel is not going to take the way and bring it to you, but he's going to take you and bring you on the way, on the path that is prepared for you. Now, the Lord is saying there are paths there are ways that I've prepared for my people, but they've been not walking this path. But this wonderful day, he says, the angel that I'm sending is the angel that is coming to put you in your path. Some of you, you have been shifted off authorities. You have been shifted off positions. You have been robbed of your belongings. But the Lord says your belongings are still there, but I want you to come back on your way. Because every one of us has a way. And the Lord says, I am bringing an angel that will also bring you on your way. Hallelujah. Now listen to, to me carefully. The Bible says in the book of Romans, the gifts of God are without the repentance. What that means is that every gift that God promised you, it has got no repentance. Does someone hear me? When God says you are going to be, you know, you are going to be one, two, three, that has got no repentance. So what is it that is happening in my life that God said I'm going to be to be? It is because you are not on the way. But God says your gift is still there. Your blessing is still there. That's why I am bringing an angel that is going to drive you to your way. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, as the angel comes, he will keep you on your way and to be your guide. Hallelujah. There is guidance that is going to happen. Some of you, there is guidance that is going to take place regarding your career. Hallelujah. There is guidance that is going to take place regarding your future. Some of you, you are at long ahead. Some of you, you are at a crossroad. But the Lord says, I am bringing an angel that will bring guidance and direction. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are at a place whether you do not know whether to go or to come. You do not know whether you are supposed to go left or right. But he says, the angel that I am bringing, he is also going to give guidance and direction. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, He's going to be your guard, your guide into a place which I have made ready for you. Hallelujah. 
This means that there are places which God has made ready for you. There is a place which God has made ready for you. You have not arrived there. Hallelujah. Don't think that when you got that promotion, you had arrived. Don't think that when you got that job, you had arrived. Don't think that when you got that deal, you had arrived. But the Lord says, there is a place which is made ready for you. Hallelujah. There is a job that is made ready for you. There is a house that is made ready for you. There is a marriage that is made ready for you. There is something somewhere that has been tailored especially for you. And God says, I am bringing that angel. And when he comes, he will keep you on the way so that you will, you will be able to arrive in a place which God has kept ready for you. Someone clap hands for God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your God who speaks. You are a God who never lies. And I pray, Father, that may our ears begin to open. And may our eyes begin to see what you have prepared for us. For no eye nor ear has heard or has entered the eye the, the mind of man what you have prepared for us. But I declare, Father, as a servant of God, that from this day, may your people experience your presence that will lead and guide them. May your people experience your presence that will keep them in your way. May your people experience your presence that will take them to a place which you have made ready for them. And I know that, Father, you are doing this all because of your love. Thank you, Jesus. You are the God who speaks. And I believe you are speaking today to us. And I pray, Father, that let everyone's journey be clear. I pray that let everyone's feet be directed. May there be a lamp and a light that will shine on our way as we are journeying into a place which you have made ready for us. I rebuke this morning, this day, whatever the enemy has stolen, I declare and I command a return in the name of Jesus. Jesus, may doors be opened for your children, O oh Lord. May we experience your presence wherever we are and wherever we go. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name, honor you. For you are God and you are faithful and so true. Men of God, before she takes the baby, I want to pray for her. God has prepared for you. And it's as if you had, you had come to a point where you were giving up with your life and your career. But God says, there is a place I've prepared for you. And outside intercession, the Lord says, outside intercession, you will not be able to arrive at the place. Because God has given you a heart of intercession. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray right now, Father, I release a blessing over her life. And I say, from this day, Father, there will be signs and there will be wonders in the name of Jesus. And I release the anointing to run, restoration. There are things 
which were stolen in your life, but the Lord will restore them. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says, I see you, I've been seeing you, I've not neglected you. But I can see you, I've been seeing you, I've been hearing you. But today it's your day for your miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And as I pray for her, there is also someone, I don't know who you are, but you've had these words, Lord, do you see me? Specifically these words, Lord, do you see me? It's like you've been praying, praying, but you are coming to a point where you're asking, Lord, do you see me? I don't know who you are, but I would have loved to lay hands on you because the Lord sees you. You've been asking yourself, Lord, what about me? Do you see me? But the Lord says, I see you and I hear you. And today, I am sending an angel that will bring you on your way. And Father, I pray over her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that whatever you are supposed to see her for, I know you've been seeing. But I pray that today, Father, may this be a day of a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I declare an open door. And I shut all the other doors that are bringing confusion in her life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, I declare, and I say all the evil doors must shut down right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. Let there be a sign. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say after me, in the name of Jesus. Let every evil door be shut. In the name of Jesus. Let every evil door be shut. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for doors of breakthrough for doors of spiritual encounters godly encounters to open in the name of Jesus say I shut the voice of the enemy over my life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I want you to begin to pray for yourself whatever you believe God for I want you to pray for it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray and we thank you, Lord, for whatever your people believe you for. Oh, Lord, we know you are faithful and true in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Just because I promised people uh, 